I know who it is at my door. Like I knew who the dude was because he was looking at me when we was down in the neighborhood. But honey child boo boo is not this type of party. And you married. Hard work, hard work. Hard work, hard work. Hard work, work. It's Army Princess here and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are watching me for the very first time I'm Army Princess US Army soldier. I've been in the military for over 10 years now And I love to share my experiences with you all to help you all become the best Service members you can be with that being said go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now Because you never want to miss an upload from me. I upload military related content every single Monday and sometimes Throughout the week, I might sprinkle in other types of content. So make sure your notification bell is on with the all option so you never miss an upload from me and you will be the first to drop a green heart emoji in my comment section. So I've recently watched the Army Barbie and she did a story time and I was like, you know what? I want to do a story time on my channel because I'm feeling like with everything that's going on in the world, with everything that happened to Vanessa, this provides me an opportunity to teach somebody in a way that they wouldn't be like, oh, she just taught me something. Maybe I should remember that. Especially if you're thinking about joining the military. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what happened to me at my very first duty station with some dudes in the barracks. And I don't want it to happen to y'all. So I'm just trying to help y'all out. So as y'all know, I was stationed in Japan at my very first duty station as like a 21 year old, fresh off the boat, <laughs> say off the boat, fresh from my mama house, 21 year old. I went all the way overseas to Japan as my very first duty station. Now the Japanese culture is amazing. It's beautiful. I love the Japanese culture, but the Americans overseas, Oh, honey child boo boo, that's, that's, that's a whole nother subject. The culture overseas with the service members and the lifestyle is totally different from in the States. I would say overseas, you kind of have a family environment, a family bond, a family culture, because you are all you really are comfortable with. So you kind of hang out. So overseas, when I was in Japan, we had what's called the day room. The day room is a room inside of your barracks building that has like a couch, a TV, a stove, a sink, places where you can cook because you don't have, in a lot of the older barracks, you didn't have your own personal stove and cooking cooking appliances. You do have a refrigerator, but they don't want you to be able to cook in every single room because number one, that sets the fire alarm off. People can like accidentally burn up their they apartment or whatever, their room. So you have one central location on each floor called the day room. Now the day room in Japan, the day room in Japan, that was like the club. That was our hangout spot. That was the club. And when I tell you every single Friday, we would all conjugate in the day room. People would go to the shop at the class six and get all their drinks. We had like a bar split, a bar set up. We had the TV going. You get somebody cooking. You get somebody out there on the grill and bringing the ribs and the food in. You turn them lights down low and put that music up and baby, it turned into 585 the club. So I call it 585 because that was the name of the building. Like the building number was building number 585. But we used to call it Club 585 because that's exactly what it turned into. When I tell you people would come from all over the base to come to our day room to hang out and party in the day room. Drinks going, people rapping, people dancing, music going. It was just a real good time. The downfall of having a club like basically down the hall from your room is that you get people drunk acting a fool. You get people drunk knocking on people's doors, jiggling the door handle, trying to get in. You get people sleeping in beds that they don't supposed to be in beds in. Like it was a whole hot mess. One night we was partying, drinking, partying, drinking in the barracks. You had people that kind of like peel off. Like you be like, Where's Specialist Nuffy? And where's Specialist Smith? Oh, okay, they gone. You look up, you see two more people gone. Or you see people making out in the barracks. I mean, making out in the corner. So this one particular night, I know my liquor. 
I know when I'm getting tipsy or when I feel like I need to cut myself off, I never, ever let myself get to the point where I'm just pissy drunk and I don't know what's going on. Because for number one, I don't like the feeling. And for number two, it's not safe in that type of environment. So I'm like, told my friend, hey, I'm about to leave. I'm about to go to my room. Like my room is literally like four apartment rooms down the hall. I'm like, I'm about to go to my room. So she like, let me walk with you. So she walked me to my room. Luckily in our rooms, you you have like a separate room. So when you walk into it, it's like a common area with a stove, a bathroom, a little kitchen area. And then I have a door. My roommate has a door and we can lock our doors. And when we go into our room, you have your own room. So you can lock your main door, like the hallway door, and or you can leave it open because a lot of times we used to leave ours open. Me and my roommate would leave our main room, our main hallway door open because when you go in there, all it is is a refrigerator and lead to the bathroom. But we would lock our bedroom doors. So I go to my room. Everybody know my room used to just be open. Like it was just the hangout spot. So I would go to my room. She walked me to my room and then I went to into my bedroom and I locked my bedroom door. So I take my clothes off. I get in the bed. I'm a little bit tipsy. The room is spinning. I hear. I'm like, who's knocking at my door? I'm like, who is it? I hear a dude's voice. I act like I'm asleep. I know who it is at my door like I knew who the dude was because he was looking at me when we was down in the day room but honey child boo boo it's not this type of party and you married that's the other thing so the thing about it with the barracks is people like I told y'all people would come from all over to our barracks people that was shouldn't have been in the barracks people that was married was in the barracks like baby like boo boo why you knocking at my door and you got a whole wife at home like your whole your whole wife is at home and the thing about me being a pharmacy technician everybody has to go through pharmacy on base like through a year i'm probably gonna see everybody i'm gonna see you i'm gonna see your wife because she probably at some point got sick i'm gonna see your kids because they probably at some point got sick so don't try to act like you're not married because i know you married i know you got a whole wife at home why sir sir Sir, why are you knocking at my door at three o'clock in the morning and you know I'm drunk? Words of advice for females in, in particular, like you have to know your boundaries and you have to know who you are to your core. Like, please don't be that one because I've witnessed, I've witnessed people that are like pissy drunk pissy drunk don't know you know who they are who they surround us are how they gonna get home and like i said we, we like a family so we take care of each other but you might have that one that might try you like and i'm not even trying to be funny like if you've been flirting with a dude all night or y'all have a like a little flirty flirty type relationship and now you pissy drunk you need to be able to hold your liquor and you need to know when you need to stop because somebody might be like she been flirting with me all night you know what i mean and it's just that type of environment and that's why like the whole like sexual harassment stuff in the military can get so big because you have situations like this where people partying and they drinking and they conjugating together in this this little small environment now once you go up in rank people living in housing officers are not hanging out with lower enlisted that's partying like this so the most bulk of the sexual harassment claims and stuff that goes on and stuff that happens is with the lower and junior enlisted because lower and junior enlisted are the ones that party and hang out together in these little drunk environments i say all that to say Please be safe when you out hanging out with your friends, when you out partying in these barracks, when you out overseas, especially if you hanging out partying and they think that you giving off these vibes, some people will try you. Um, and it be the ones that you know, you be like, really sir, really? And I can talk about these type of situations for hours. I could go on and on with these barracks and these day room stories for hours, but I want y'all to watch my other videos. So, 
Y'all let me know in the comment section below. Have y'all had somebody that tried you? Like you was drinking and y'all was out to the club or y'all was partying and they just like, was like, let me just slide in and make my move real quick. And you was like, no. Or did you just like give in and he was like, oh, he slid in. He tried to make his move. Let me just see what he's talking about. Y'all let me know was I right, was I wrong down in the comment section below. And on that note, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Hard work, hard work. Hard work. Hard work.